All right, welcome everyone to STEM Together, where we facilitate discussions involving industry professionals and students on everyday matters involving STEM. Now, today's topic covers the weather, and I have with me two wonderful guests joining me to discuss this. But before we engage in discussion, let me first introduce myself and then our invited guests. Hi everyone, I'm Danny from Science Centre Singapore, and I'm pleased to be the facilitator of today's discussion with two wonderful guests. Firstly, Ms. Tham Shu Jing, an executive meteorologist from the Meteorological Service Singapore. Shu Jing, thank you for joining us on STEM Together. How are you? Hi, I'm good. That's great. Finally, we have uh, Aishwarya Goyal, a student from Sida Girls Secondary. I'm going to refer to Aishwarya as Ash for the rest of this discussion. Ash, how are you? I'm good today, thank you. That's great. So Shujing and Ash, thank you both for joining STEM together. Let's discuss today's topic, the weather, in three parts. So part one on precipitation, part two on prediction, and part three on protection. Now for the first part on precipitation, let's start off with Ash. Ash, do you read the weather before you head out? And if so, how do you go about this? Usually it depends, like if I go out um, and it involves being outdoors, then I'll check the weather before I go out. Uh, but if it's um, if I have to be indoors, then I don't really check it. And I usually just use the weather app on my phone. Uh, using a weather app. So which weather app do you use for that? <laughs> I think Apple has its own weather app, so I just use that, yeah. Ah, okay, okay. And um, what can you tell me about uh, the reliability of this based on what Apple tells you, when you go out, is it exactly as what you had been told on the app? I think usually uh, when it's on a daily basis and I look uh, look up the weather for today, then it's pretty accurate. But then when it's more of like weekly basis, then it's not exactly that accurate. Yeah. Okay. Uh, anything peculiar that you find about the weather of late in Singapore? I think sometimes the weather changes drastically quite fast. Like just hmm. like today, it was super sunny and then suddenly started raining but that was also for a very short period of time and it was sunny while it was raining so, oh, yeah. when was it raining because in my area it's still yet to rain oh like in school itself uh, uh, like, where is that Wule Potong Pasir area Potong yeah. Pasir area oh interesting okay <laughs> okay what do you think in your opinion contributes to this kind of sudden swings you said it's like sunny and then suddenly it's raining and all that I guess it would be definitely first uh, climate change global warming leading to like unpredictable weather and uh, air pressure, changes in air pressure and changes in wind direction, which I guess affects the movement of clouds. Yeah. Let's check with Xu Jing, our expert for today. Xu Jing, the weather, uh, as you know, you've just heard from Ash, the weather turned so quickly. She just mentioned, you know, it was sunny and then it was raining uh, after that. So what causes this kind of erratic weather that we're starting to see um, not just for today, but more regularly off. Okay, maybe I'll just say that being in the tropics with uh, hot and humid conditions, uh, the weather in Singapore is typically characterized by uh, small scale convective thunderstorms. Okay, mm. and these thunderstorms are usually just a few kilometers wide. Um, so, as you right, uh, the development of these thunderstorms is actually largely driven by the confluence of winds. So, imagine winds, masses, uh, air masses colliding with each other. So this confluence of winds will push the moist uh, surface air into the atmosphere. Um, the rising air expands and cool, and the water vapor condenses into water droplets to form clouds. Okay, and so this continued growth of clouds leads to more and more water droplets, which which eventually then falls as rain. Where the confluence of winds is, the higher the likelihood um, a thunderstorm will occur. Okay. But this confluence may not occur uniformly over our island and hence the variation in the development of thunderstorms of locations. Um, and if you think it's erratic, um, I think it's not wrong to think that way because the, these thunderstorms actually develop very rapidly within 10 to 15 minutes. And then they are usually short-lived, uh, dissipating within an hour or less of the formation. Yeah. And they also can be localized over a very small area of Singapore. So, um, as such, the weather may appear erratic as it changes quickly and varies across the islands. Well, on the basis of temperature, we do observe differences um, across the islands that could be attributed to urbanization. Um, 
more built up areas such as the CPD can be more than three degrees Celsius hotter than other areas such as wow. Okay. Yeah. Um, however, urban heat islands are a very complex topic. Very complex. <laughs> okay. So much research is being undertaken to uh, fully understand the magnitude of uh, urban heat island effects on our weather and climate. Right. Thanks for doing uh... All right, let's move on to uh, our next pillar of today's discussion which is on prediction. So back to Ash. Ash, do you think it's possible to predict what the weather will be for, well, the next two hours? Uh, you mentioned that Apple is able to do that for the day, but how about the next two hours or for the week? Yeah, I think it's quite possible. It just depends on how accurate it is. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, and, and how do you think that that could be done? You know, aside from asking Apple or Alexa, you know, I'm guessing the people who predict the weather, they collect data over time of the atmosphere and then I guess they study the trends uh, which, after which they're able to predict the weather. And I guess they have um, specialized equipment that can help them to do so. Hmm. Okay, thanks for saying that. That's a good, uh, good guess, yeah. Shu Jing, uh, what do you say to that? You know, how is it possible to predict the weather and to do so accurately? The basis of a good weather is contingent on reliable observations of the current state of weather. So we have uh, in place many um, um, a dense network of sensors, um, such as a satellite reception system, radar, um, automated weather stations, apply observatory and lightning detection systems, among others, to collect meteorological data for weather analysis as well as for forecasting. So um, maybe I'll just run through a few of them. So like for the satellite reception system, uh, it allows us to receive and process raw satellite data from multiple geostationary and polar orbiting satellites. So with this uh, process data, we can then monitor weather over the Asia Pacific. So why is it important to um, actually monitor weather over the Asia Pacific? It's because um, development of low pressure system in the South China Sea, so such as Typhoon, for example, it may influence wind patterns over Singapore and trigger development of intense thunderstorm clouds that can then bring heavy rainfall to Singapore. So that's why we have to uh, monitor the whole Asia Pacific region. Um, so then we also have radar, which allows us to uh, monitor rain clouds more than 400 kilometers away. Um, so using these two systems together, we can then monitor weather over Singapore and the surrounding region to assess the likelihood of impending uh, inclement um, weather in our region. And there are other systems also that um, takes in observation data. Okay. So after we take in all this observation data, these data are then used in numerical weather prediction models. Um, okay. of these models are then used by the meteorologists to forecast the weather for the next day and several days ahead. And um, how accurate is the weather forecasting by MSS? Um, Over 22 hours or 24 hours? So, uh, so on average, the accuracy of our weather forecast ranges from um, between 75% for 24 hours forecast and 90% for near term 2 hours now cast. Right. Um, okay. yeah. So it's challenging to forecast the weather, especially in the tropics, accurately. Yes, yes. Yeah, I know, for, for example, when I go swimming at uh, in any of the active SG swimming pools, you know, they do look at the NEA uh, mm. uh, reports, for especially for the next uh, uh, hour or two, uh, especially for if there's a risk of lightning, right, Cat 1 status, and then if that... Uh, status is actually uh, an active status then you know no one can enter the pool so mm. i do see that it is pretty reliable actually uh, but it is not easy to get it right all the time because it's just so dynamic the weather uh, let's say we don't look at two instruments uh, if we just look at visual cues by looking up at the sky and looking at cloud formations assessing the wind speed sometimes you know uh, sometimes we feel like oh the air feels a bit damp now the winds are so strong is that likely to give a reliable assessment of what to expect uh, weather-wise? Uh, yeah, definitely visual cues are important in, in assessing the development of rain clouds. Um, mm -hmm. While advancement in technology has certainly been helpful, um, there are still some limitations in detecting early development of rain clouds. So, uh, for example, uh, developing rain cloud may not uh, contain water droplets that's large enough to be captured by the weather radar. 
until it has almost matured into a towering rain cloud. So that's really close to precipitation stage. Um, however, with visual cues, a trained meteorologist would be able to identify a uh, developing rain clouds in its early stages. Mm. And that's the um, issue earlier forecast of in, in inclement weather. Right. Mm. Okay. Thanks so much, Kay. Let's move on to our final pillar of today's discussion, which is on protection. And this is something I think a lot of us can relate to. Let's talk about maybe a few sticky scenarios that all of us could potentially find ourselves in. And let's discuss what's best done in those situations. So scenario one, um, let's say we're kayaking in open waters and suddenly, you know, heavy rain starts to fall with lightning and thunder. Uh, Ash, how would you protect yourself in this scenario? Um, I guess I'll just wear a raincoat, a <laughs> gear cap, and kayak as fast as I can to the nearest shore. Okay. Uh, Shu Jing, what is your take on this? Uh, if you see the dark clouds or rain approaching, hmm. return to shore ASAP and okay. seek shelter. Uh, most lightning strikes occur within 6 km of a thunderstorm. Wow. If you're in open waters, um, your body may be the tallest object in your surroundings. Right. Yeah, so you'll become, um, likely become a potential target. Sport. Yeah, gosh. So before kayaking, check the weather conditions. Okay. And while kayaking, please stay alert to any changes to the weather. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and for that, we can tune into the NEA app, right? Yeah, 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 you can. Okay. So for scenario two, thanks for sharing that. For scenario two, uh, assuming we're playing soccer in an open field and then the weather turns nasty with uh, lightning and also heavy rainfall as well. Ash, how would you protect yourself? Again, just maybe run to the nearest shelter. Yeah, <laughs> maybe like there's a car nearby to go in the car because yeah. maybe I think the metal body can conduct if electricity maybe and then protect uh -huh. me. I think that's a good one. Yeah. Um, Shujing, over to you. What's your take on this? Um, for similar reasons mentioned previously, if you see changes in the weather or dark clouds or rain approaching or playing in an open field, six yeah. shelters. <laughs> okay, six shelters. Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. All right. Well, let's wind down this uh, session uh, with one final question uh, for Shujing. What recommendations would you give so that we can leave home better prepared to face unexpected weather? Um, you can check uh, the polling websites and nda.gov.sg, uh, weather.gov.sg or my EMV app for the weather forecast ranging from two hours to four days ahead. Um, also, do subscribe to the heavy rain warnings for advanced alerts of inclement weather. Uh, you can also tap on our lightning information service. It's available on our website or in the um, my EMV app to receive near real-time alerts of lightning detected. Uh, and our forecast of uh, thundery showers um, within a radius of 6 km or 8 km of your selected location in Singapore. Um, you can also visit the MSS website or um, and our YouTube channel to watch the MSS um, fortnightly weather outlook video. Uh, this gives you an overview of the expected weather two weeks ahead. Um, and I should add in if you would like to learn more about Singapore's weather and climate, you see our learn web page on MSS website and also mm -hmm. our educational video that's <laughs> on our YouTube channel. Wonderful. Thanks for that uh, promo there. Yeah. Well, with that, I wish to thank our guests, Xu Jing and Ash, for contributing to this discussion on the weather. I've learned uh, much from both of you candid sharing, and I hope the rest of our viewers did too. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube and you haven't subscribed to our channel, please hit that notification bell to subscribe. And if you're viewing the STEM Together series on Facebook, click follow. And remember, like and share this video with your friends. Stay tuned for our next conversation. This is Danny with my guest, Shu Jing. And Ash, signing out. Bye-bye.